Okay, so this is chapter six, uh, example eight actually. And you're given the volume of a pyramid with a square base right here. And this is setting the pyramid uh, dead center of it on the origin and going straight up. So the formula is already given. And we're going to use this to talk about uh, a question, what, what happens if we don't go all the way to the top and only make part of that pyramid? OK, so first of all, let me go ahead and take a couple of screen clippings here. So this is the formula for this situation. Now. What I'm going to do real quick is look at, so this has a square base of L right now and a height H. Okay, so the question we have is what happens if I have a square base and we'll call it B and we want to stop here and this length here is A, so it's a square and uh, bottom is square of size B instead of L. Okay, one other thing I'm going to do is call this instead of H, capital H. So before I go too far, I'm just going to rewrite it in terms of B and capital H. So then my volume, pretty much the exact same as here, is going to be from zero to capital letter H, and instead of L squared, my length of my base is B. So it'll be B squared over capital H squared, capital H minus Y quantity squared dy. And we could integrate this, and it would basically be this formula here with a B instead of a, and a capital H. However, what if we stopped at A? and didn't go all the way to the top. And so we stop at this height here. And, okay, I can stop anywhere I want to. So instead of stopping at the all the way where it comes to a peak, we'll stop somewhere in between called H. Okay, so far so good. Doesn't change anything. This H is different, little h, big H, so it was inside. Now, the thing is, we need to get rid of the big H, so we're going to define big H in terms of little h. But first of all, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit before I get rid of the big H's. So what do I mean by cleaning that up? Let's see, to integrate this, I'm going to have to expand that. So I've got b squared over h squared. And over here, I have h squared minus 2hy plus y squared dy. And again, I'm going to continue to clean this up for a second. Volume equals 0 to little h b squared, I'm going to multiply this through using the distributive property. So h is reduced out on the first one. Then I'll have a negative 2b squared y over h, once I multiply and reduce, plus b squared y squared all over h squared. But I still have a problem because in my original, let me just make this clean here, that's a 2. So in the original question, all we had was the base here stopping at h, no big h. So I need to get rid of the big h, and I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to use similar triangles and a substitution. So I'm just going to make a side slice of this object. Okay, and let me color code this. Sorry about that. 
So there's just a slice of it. This is big H. And all the way across is B. And halfway across would be B over 2. Actually, I'm going to put that on the other side. Just You'll see why in just a second. So that is this length here. Now, we're going to stop before we get to the top. And that's going to be at A all the way across. Do, do, do. And the height going to A, I'm just going to drop that height to right here, is little h. So we're not coming all the way to the top. We're only coming up to little h, not all the way to the peak, big H. So this distance here, if we drop down, then this total distance from here to here is A. This total distance is B. So if I subtract and get this, if I take B minus A, I'll have these two pieces left over. If I just want to look at one of those pieces, then I need to cut that area in half. So that will be this one little piece right here. I'm going to shade it in. Is a length B minus A over 2. OK. So now I've got similar triangles. What do I mean? I have on the green triangle, let me just get rid of some of this information here. So we have all the color coding correct. OK. And let's make this black. So from the green triangle, similar triangle property says H over B over 2 is equal to little h over b minus a over 2. So just similar triangles, same angle. Multiply both sides. I'm going to solve for h. Multiply both sides by uh, b over 2. And what I'll end up with is h equals h times b over B minus A, the twos reduce out. So now I can get rid of the big H and have my formula in terms of only little b, little a, and little h. So let's do my substitution now. Zero to little h, b squared minus 2b squared y over h, which is, oops, what is h? Is hb over b minus a. hb over b minus a plus b squared y squared all over h squared, which is h b over b minus a quantity squared. Of course, you're dealing with fractions. Let me just clean this up a little bit over here so it looks nicer. Zero to little h bracket dy. Of course, I'm not going to divide by a fraction. I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal and reduce. Uh, feel free to pause it and do it step by step, uh, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to do that in my head. 0 to h, the first one reduces to b squared because I've got nothing on it. On the second one, let's see what's going to happen. I'm going to have a negative 2. A b on the top is going to reduce with a b on the bottom. Y times 
B minus A, and I still have an H on the bottom. I'm multiplying by the reciprocal and reducing. Plus, okay, so on this one I have to expand and reduce. So H squared, B squared on bottom, B squared, B squared pops out. So I have A, Y squared times B minus A quantity squared all over H squared dy. Okay, so now I have something I can integrate fairly easily. So we shall now integrate this. My volume is going to be, bracket, B squared times Y, and don't forget there's a Y here, which maybe we should have in the back. So let's put that in the back, negative 2, B, B minus A, all over H, and then the Y is going to be what? Y squared over 2. Those 2's drop out. Next one. Uh, in my mind, I'm going to put the Y in back, so let's go ahead and do that. That's a plus. B minus A squared over H squared times Y to the third over 3 integrating, and I'm going to go from 0 to H. Okay, since everything has a Y in there, clearly when I plug in the 0 second, everything's going to drop out, so I just need to plug in the H and clean up everything, and I shall. So, volume uh, is going to be B squared times H minus B, B minus A over H. And for Y, I'm going to plug in H squared. So here an H drops out, and on top it drops out. OK, and over here, I've got B minus A squared over, I'm going to, I've got that multiplication, I'm going to call it 3H squared, and then plug in H for Y, making that H cubed. So two H's will factor out on the bottom, two on the top, leaving me a simple one on the top. One, eight, one factor of H. I don't need to plug in zero because when I plug in zero in for Y, everything becomes zero and I don't need to write nothing. So I won't. So now I'm going to clean this up a little bit. V equals, let's see what we have here. I've got B squared H and I'm going to multiply this out. And I've got to multiply by the H, and I'll end up with a negative B squared H. And then negative B times negative A is positive A B H. And over here, plus something over 3. What do I have over 3? I'm going to factor out B minus A quantity squared times H, which is going to give me b squared h minus 2a b h plus a, a, a squared h, sorry, a squared h, yes. Okay, now let's see. B squared H minus B squared H obviously cancels each other out. I want to add my two fractions. I need a common denominator. I've got a denominator of 3. So I'm going to take the front one and multiply it by 3 and divide it by 3 because that's the same as multiplying by 1. Now I can combine all like terms in my numerator. And volume equals 3ABH minus 2ABH is 1ABH. And that's it. Plus B squared H plus A squared H over 
3. And if you want to make it look pretty, we're going to go ahead and factor out the H and put it over 3. And I'll put the A squared in front plus a b plus b squared as my final answer. So hopefully that made sense how I did that. Uh, and if not, please let me know.